Welcome to the Spunky Spirit Podcast. I'm your host, psychic medium, Carrie Muggs. This is where we learn all things spirit, everything from spiritual gifts, awakenings, ghosts, aliens, and starseeds. Nothing is untouchable, but always fun and spunky. I am honored to be on this spiritual journey with you, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Hello, Spunksters. How are you today? So, today we're going to talk about dreams. Now, I did a podcast about a year ago about messages that come in dreams. So, messages from loved ones that come into dreams. But today we're going to talk more about dreams themselves and different types of dreams and um, how they could be part of your clairvoyance all that kind of stuff. Now, the reason I decided to talk about dreams is because this week, my husband started having some nightmares and they were continuous every single night. And so we finally um, saged, saged the house and then they stopped. So I thought, you know, there's so many dreams, dreams can, that there's so many different things that dreams can signify or, or dreams can be. And, and so I kind of wanted to do an episode on it just because they're kind of portals. They can be so many things. They can be good. They're like telephones from spirit world or they can all, they're also part of our subconscious. There're just so many things about dreams that play out. So, we're going to kind of go down the dream realm and talk about the different ways, different dreams. So, the definition of a dream is a dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntary in the mind during certain stages of sleep. And humans can spend about two hours per night dreaming. So what I thought was interesting is that it says involuntary because there are dreams like lucid dreams that you can control. And some of you might have had some of the experience with lucid dreams and you do control. I remember I would have lucid dreams all the time when I was little and I loved them because I could control them and I could do anything I wanted inside the dream. And I thought that that was fascinating. I loved it. But then there's also different types of dreams and what dreams can symbolize. So a lot of people think or a lot of science, it's, it's you know, a lot of it is our subconscious or our subconscious is emotions and things that we're trying to get through the day. And so we can go through the day and have these things happen and then we can dream about it that night, which is true because just this last week I was watching Modern Family a lot after I'd get home from readings because sometimes I need TV to ground. And, and I would watch and then last night I had dreams where the modern family people were inside the dream. So I know that sometimes dreams are definitely our subconscious trying to, to process things that happen throughout the day. And these nightmares can be the same thing. If you're having some sort of fears or stress throughout the day, um, then this could be a subconscious way to eliminate or process the things that you've gone through, which is, is totally fascinating. But I also think that dreams can be a segue for other outside entities or visits or anything, things that are outside of us. So sometimes dreams can be what's inside of us and sometimes dreams can be from what's outside of us. And so we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit. A lot of clairvoyant people, people who um, have the have the vision, psychic ability, will dream and they can have prophetic dreams or dream and I have two people in my family that that very much can dream have prophetic dreams and it kind of scares them in fact one of them was like I don't want to do this anymore and I said well just tell spirit you don't want to have this gift anymore you don't want to do this you don't want this you don't want to connect this way and so the prophetic dreams it can be a way for some people lots of people can have prophetic dreams and and it's of clairvoyant capability. So we all have psychic abilities. They're called the clairs. And clairvoyance is the dreaming part because we have these visions or we have these images that we can see. So the thing that I thought was fascinating, though, as I was researching this, is um, 
There's a book ca- called The Awake Dreamer by Samantha Fay, and she goes into depth about dreams. And dreams have been around forever. And she quotes Carl Jung, and he, he says, "A dream is a hidden door in the innermost and in the innermost and most secret recesses of the soul." opening into that cosmic night. So it's kind of, like I said, like I tell you all the time, spiritual growth is inside. And so dreams are inside and can be sometimes outside, can be, um, because when, when different people or spirits visit us in dreams, that's an outside kind of source. Um, and when other, like when we have nightmares and outside frequencies can visit us in dreams sometimes that's also an outside source but most of the time the dream is dreaming is something inside of us and we're going to talk about that more when we get down to when we get down to some of the other some of the other topics so what i loved too is that samantha fay and i'll i'll tag this book or link it to i'll have the links the link to this book in the show in this in the show notes down at the bottom but Throughout history, dreams have been all over the place. And so she says that the first recorded dream dates back to the 2700s BCE when the Sumerian king dreamed he saw men and women carrying large objects with the help of animals. He interpreted this as a sign that the gods wanted him to build a temple. And so I thought this was kind of interesting because Egypt priests... She goes on to say, Egypt priests, known as the masters of secret things, interpreted the dreams of the faithful. The Chester Betty Papyrus includes a record of Egyptian dream interpretations dating back to 1800 BCE. In India, it's called the Athavidya, contains a chapter of dreams and omens. So dreams have been around for so long. And it's so interesting because some of this stuff I didn't even... I didn't even know they were called, there were dream diviners called examiners of dreams that worked in ancient China. While the ancient Greeks and Romans, this is what I loved, brought dream interpreters to war with them, believing that dreams were messages from the gods and could help them with battles. And so there's Jacob um, of the Technicolor dream coat, where he interpreted dreams of the king. Also, there's also Jacob's ladder. He had a dream and he saw angels descending from heaven on a ladder. And later he was warned in a dream to return home. And then God's God appeared to see King Solomon in a dream and offered him anything that he wanted. And Solomon chose wisdom. And oh, no, it was Joseph in the Technicolor dream coat. Sorry, Jacob was Jacob's ladder. Joseph was Joseph in the Technicolor dream coat where he interpreted the king's dream and got let out of prison because he was such a great dream interpreter. So it just kind of show that lots of people have dreams, prophetic dreams, message dreams, and sometimes just dreams to let us know what's going, what's, you know, just to process some of the emotions that we're having or things that are coming. My favorite dreams though, and I talk about this a lot, is um, when our dreams are messages from spirit. And this could be messages from ancestors, messages from our guides, messages from anybody spiritually wise. And I love this. There's kind of, so our ancestors, our past loved ones can come in and talk to us and give us messages during dreams. Now, these dreams are very, very vivid when they're visits. There's kind of a different type. So when you're just dreaming and your loved ones appear in your dreams or they're just there, there is some significance to this. However, when it's very, very vivid and and seems very real, that is a visit. That's a real visit. And lots of spirits try to come through dreams because we're more relaxed. We're in a more relaxed straight state. And so they try to come through and visit us in our dreams because it's, it still takes them a lot of energy. They still have to acclimate that energy. And there's been stories about where spirits have come and said, we're trying, I'm trying to come to their dreams. I'm still just figuring it out, things like that. So it's kind of the energy, it does take a lot for spirits to show up in dreams still. They still have to figure out that energy. And sometimes if we're not clairvoyant, it's a little harder if we don't 
vision or visualize. We're not very clairvoyant. Sometimes it's a little harder for them to come through that way too. And I also believe that there's a thing called night working and that's when people who are healers or people who are, well, kind of maybe anybody really can kind of go in, in their dreams and they learn and they, um, their spiritual team teaches them things or teaches them about their gifts or teaches them about their spiritual awakening. And I fully believe in this because I have had, um, a lot of experiences with this. And Samantha Faye also writes about this in her book. She's had lots of experiences with this too. And sometimes you can, and even shamans in used to believe, I don't think they probably still do, but they believe that they can go into people's dreams and help them heal. And so there's been movies about this too. There's been a long time ago, there was a movie called Dreamscape where they made this um, concoction or this visual thing that they would put on people's head while they were sleeping and they could go into people's dreams and help them heal or help them with certain things and then they started to want to use it as a weapon and they wanted to like assassinate people and ironically I loved that I loved that show when I was little because I was so fascinated with it and um now they're making they're remaking it they're remaking it now and I'm kind of interested to see what's going on but lots of movies like Inception the nightmare like not lots of movie but about nightmares Wizard of Oz they all kind of have different like access to dreams that's where people can access our subconscious so and I love it because that's where we learn during the night in our sleep we can have these profound experiences or these profound um teachings from our own spiritual team. And the thing that's crazy is you can create your own spiritual team to help you do this too. I mean, your guides can help you do this and other people on the other side can help you do this. And even people that you live with now that are around you, a lot of times the phenomenon of having a dream and then waking up and and having a dream about your friends and people in your dream and then telling your friends about it the next day and then being like, wait, I had that same dream. It's crazy. It's a crazy kind of um, connection. And so I fully believe that there's more to dreams. I think it's a it's a frequency. It's a spiritual thing. And it's also science, scientific. And I think that they could connect. If they could connect those two things, it would be amazing. So... Also, too, when you work with your spiritual team in your dreams, you can work with your spirit guides, but you can also call on other spirits to work with if you're going through something specific in your life. So Napoleon Hill, he would create this dream team and he would call meetings with them every night. And there were like high society people in him that had passed over. And Abraham Lincoln was one, a couple other presidents, people who had been who have been very successful on earth that had passed over. And he started, Napoleon started to think that he was kind of going crazy because he would have these, before he would go to sleep, he would envision these meetings with these very important men. And he kind of thought that maybe he was going crazy or it was imagination. So he kind of stopped doing it. And then one night, Abraham Lincoln came to him in a dream and said, you need to continue these dreams because we have lots of work to do. And Napoleon did, and he continued to write a lot more books after that about about positive thinking and about all of that kind of stuff. So, so it was interesting to me that you can always call on people, on other people on the other side or other spirits on the other side to help you also, which I thought was, I just love that. I love that idea of it. Now, um, dreams can also be, Like they can bring through messages. So this is kind of what we call soul traveling. When the dreamscape thing, when we go to other people's dreams or we, um, you know, or people have the same dreams, it's like our soul. Lots of people believe that our soul travels to different parts, which could also be called astral traveling. But you can do that when you're lucid dreaming. 
when you're lucid dreaming. And lucid dreaming is when you have these dreams. I kind of call it that in-between time, the Peter Pan time, when you're half awake and half asleep. And you kind of know what's going on in your dreams and you can control the whole thing. And I could do this so well when I was younger. I loved it. And it's always so weird to me that it happens after you wake up for a minute, like at three or four in the morning, and then you go back to sleep. And this happens. And I... and. You can practice lucid dreaming. You could practice all of that kind of stuff. But I kind of think too that meditation, sometimes you'll hit that, that half awake and half asleep. And I kind of believe that that's kind of the point of meditation is to get into that that subconsciousness or that frequency of that dream, of a dream type thing. And that's when you kind of get some of the best downloads or some of the best information. And I kind of feel like that's, that's, kind of the main point sometimes. And I kind of feel like there's this um, collectiveness about these dreams that are that are kind of awesome. So, and you can also have like healing dreams. So dreaming about healing someone, and this is the night work thing, you can go and heal somebody, go to their dreams and heal them. Or um, you can you can have that intention before you go to sleep to go into somebody's dream and heal them. Or you can try and have an intention before you go to sleep to um, try and remember. This is why I really think dream journals are so important because we wake up and we think, oh, I'm going to remember that. And then we don't. And the next morning we think that we're going to, but we really don't. So that's dream journals are super important. You just keep one and you don't by the side of your bed and you don't wait till the morning to write in it because you will forget, even though you think you're not going to, because it's so on your mind at the time you, you will. Um, so Dreaming about healing someone can indicate, though, that you have a lot of empathy, you have connection with people, you have desire to be a health care giver or to help people, and, and it can signify that everything will work out to your best interest. Now, what I want you to make sure when you do this dream journal is to make sure you pay attention to the signs and symbols in your dreams. What does a lion symbolize? What what animals were there? Were there keys? Were there water? Like everything around you, I want you to write that in detail because spirit speaks in signs and symbols. And so a lot of times if you have dreams with loved ones that come through and visit you, sometimes they can't talk. I remember my first visit from my dad. He didn't say anything and I thought it was kind of weird, but it was kind of before I understood the energy And I understood what was going on. And a lot of times clients will come to me and say, well, they didn't say anything to me or they only said they loved me and then they had to leave. It's because they talk in signs and symbols. It takes them a lot of energy. So you have to, when you wake up, be aware of what was in your dream. Um, Lots of times animals will show up for me because I love animals and I feel connected to them. And animals are very symbolic. So I will, if I had a dream about a snake in the water, I'll go, I always have a dream um, dictionary so you can go in and see. A lot of times you can Google it too. That'll give you different answers. But I go in and I look and see what that symbolizes because I want to see what spirit's trying to tell me or what um, spirit wants me to know. So dreams can be very prophetic and dreams can be very healing. Dreams can be very awesome because they're visits. Lucid dreaming, you can travel anywhere, do whatever you want. And I love lucid dreaming because in the spirit realm, they kind of tell me that there's time is, there's not really time. Like we see it in hours and it's so linear here, but there it's our state of mind and we can think of anywhere and be there at that moment. And lucid dreaming is like that. You can just think of something or do something and it happens. And I love that we have that control. I think it's so, so great. Um, Now, there are awesome, awesome dreams and dreams can be beautiful and dreams can be healing and dreams can be amazing and they can be visits and messages and all the great things. There also can be scary dreams and nightmare dreams. And again, these can be the same thing. So just like 
just like spiritual dreams that are awesome and spiritual dreams that can be our subconscious giving us messages, our higher self giving us messages, our spiritual team give us, giving us messages, our loved one giving us messages, messages of healing and love. We can also have scary nightmarish dreams. And this again is the same thing. It can be our subconscious because there's something going on in our lives that scares us or is giving us a hard time. And so we process that through our dreams and it ends up being nightmares. And again, this can be symbolic. Something can be chasing you and something could be, um, you could be scared of something or, and this has got to be, first I want you to like dig deep into your internal stuff that's going on and say, okay, are you scared of being seen? Like, are you having dreams of a mask, wearing a mask? And are you scared of being seen? Are you scared that something's going to happen or something bad's going to happen. Before you go into the prophetic things, just make sure that you're not processing some subconscious stuff that you're going through in, within your life because I don't want it to scare you and think that something bad's going to happen if you're just processing stuff. Now, there can be scary prophetic dreams. I'm just, I mean, we're going to, let's be honest, there could be things that come through that kind of scare you, but they can, um, like I remember my, I hope he doesn't care about it. My brother kind of had a dream and it wasn't a scary dream. It was just a prophetic dream that he kind of didn't want. He kind of saw something happening and he's like, I don't want that to happen. And this is the one he was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to see these dreams. I don't want to have these dreams. And that's where I was like, well, just tell spirit you don't want to have these dreams anymore because he would have prophetic dreams and he would see the good and the bad that would come and he didn't want to do that. So now also too, This can be kind of scary because, um, like, sometimes it can be outside entities because our dream state is kind of easier to access, um, and that's why we get visits there from our loved ones. It can be easier for lower frequencies to access us, too. So this is where we come into nightmares, and we can come into what you call sleep paralysis. Um, there's different kind of things that can come through. Now, sleep paralysis is kind of, um, I'm going to explain this in just a minute because sleep paralysis is, is weird phenomenon to me because I've had it before, but I want to explain some things about it. But I want to read a little synopsis from Samantha's book about, um, about dreams, Nightmares. While most nightmares are simply our brain's way of organizing and releasing our daily fears, which is the subconscious, right? Some of these terrifying encounters are actually interaction with ghosts, astral shells, negative residue left by spirits, incubi or succubi, elements, and shadow people. Many believe these negative entities that appear in our nightmares are fed by a form of energy vampirism. In other words, they feed off our fear. So they come in and they scare us in our dreams so they can can have this they can have this fear, right? Astral shells or astral vampires are believed by some to be the discarded lowest energy of deceased people. It's as if when we die, the best of us ascends to heaven while the lowest, basest, darkest aspects of our discarded and remain partly alive by feeding off the energy of others when they're dreaming or visiting the astral planes in their sleep. Now, part of me doesn't know if I believe this part. I mean, it can be, uh, it, but I've talked to you guys about soul fractures and traumas, and that's what I kind of think that this is. So she's explaining that our highest self goes to heaven where some of our lowest self um, is discarded here. I have talked about soul fractures before. When we have trauma or something in our life, we leave part of our soul there. This could be exactly what she's talking about. That negative part or that scary part, that fear part, that trauma part that we leave. That's why it's so important to heal and process that trauma so we can call that that part back to us. So it doesn't, I mean, maybe she's thinking, I'm not really sure. I don't understand this part, kind of, and I don't want to lead you guys astray. And I'm just going to be honest and... And very, very honest with you that when I don't understand something, I will tell you straight out. But I think she's talking here about some of the trauma and our soul fractures that we leave behind and that energy. But I'm not sure if that energy preys up on people or preys on people. But that's not true because in haunted houses or houses that seem haunted, that energy can feel like it's preying on people. So 
Um, now this is interesting to me because this is, I've had some, I've had experiences with this. So incubi and succubi are demons who masquerade as beautiful sexual beings that often appear in people's dreams to simulate a sexual experience. People report that at night, that at the height of the de- the dream's enjoyment, the beings reveal itself for the demon it is, and then feeds off the combination of the sexual energy and fear. So they, they, they come off as like your husband or your boyfriend or your loved one. And then when, right when it gets to the right to the enjoyment or the climax, then they, they tell you who they are or they show who they are, which scares you. And also to the sexual energy feeds them. And I'm going to be completely honest. I've had experiences with this. So, and it kind of, it kind of went with sleep paralysis at the same time. And it scares the crap out of you. And there's so much fear. And so, and then they kind of take both of that energy because sexual energy is very, very strong and very, very potent. And it's also, fear is also too. It's kind of crazy. It's almost like Monsters, Inc. is real. It's almost because the monsters would come in and feed off the fear of the kids. And this is what these, this is what these low frequencies do. Um, shadow people can also be seeing during both waking and sleeping hours. And no one really knows. I've done a video. I've done an episode on shadow people. So some people think that they're from other planets or they're ghosts or these shadow people. Now, a lot of these entities show up during sleep paralysis or they show up during some of our dreams, or they show up during... Now, I know during the succubi and the incubi, they do sleep paralysis because they don't want you to move. They don't want you to move. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this a little bit is because I kind of... I follow another Dave... Oh, what's his name? Off of Paranormal 360. And he brought up some interesting aspects about this too. Is this scientific or is this spiritual? Because I was always... You know, I always, I was always under the assumption that it was spiritual. And then he said something about um, when people, people have these experiences, but then when they get on CPAP machines, these stop. And I noticed the same thing. I had these experiences all the time and it terrified me. And then I, I would say about once or twice a year, it terrified me. And then when I started, I had some breathing issues. I went on a CPAP machine and they've completely stopped. I haven't had an issue with any of this anymore. So part of you is like, I have two s- scenarios on this or two, either it is scientific and it is something that your brain doesn't get enough oxygen and you hallucinate these things or, but that's so weird to me because it felt so real. Like I, would say that it felt so real and it was terrifying, especially one of the instances was so, so terrifying to me that, um, I could hardly sleep at night and I would sleep on, in the couch, on the couch in the front room. I don't know why that would save me, but, and so, but I, he thinks that it's scientific and when you have this, but I haven't had him since I had the CPAP. I think because one of the incidences I had, and this comes a long stem of, cat stealing your baby's breath or cat stealing your energy or cat stealing. I believe some of the energy transfer is in the breathing technique. That's why breathing is so important. That's why how we breathe is so important. And I do feel like in one of the instances that I had, (laughs) so I'm going to be very vulnerable, when the entity or the thing tried to take my energy, it connected to my mouth and kind of took over my face. So I, for my belief, I believe that that's how they, that's how they take the energy. So the energy that you feel, they take it from your mouth. That's, this is my opinion. You don't, this is, this is not gospel. This is not truth. I don't even know. This is just my experience, my experience. And so I believe with the CPAP machine, they can't do that. They can't, they can't connect to that breathing system that you have and they can't take the energy and that's why they don't do it as much. So it could be scientific or it could be that that's where they take the energy is through the mouth source and they can't do that when you're in a CPAP machine. So, so if you're having those kind of, those kind of dreams, get a CPAP, get a CPAP machine or maybe even try like, you know, that new technique where they tape your mouth where, um, 
I don't know what it is. Some people tape their mouth before they go to sleep because it changes your bone structure or it changes your breathing technique. So you could try that. I don't know. This, again, is just from my experience. But I do know that nightmares can cause a lot of fear, and they are scary, especially when you have them um, continually. I remember one of the continuing dreams that I had when I was little all the time was that my dad was playing with me, and he was throwing me up in the air, and then he was getting too close to the staircase, and he would accidentally drop me over the stairs, and I would fall, 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 and then I would wake up. And I haven't had one of those those dreams since I was little. I haven't had a falling dream for a really long time. But we also have reoccurring dream about um, I have reoccurring dreams about being blind and not being able to see anything. And I cannot, for the life of me, open my eyes. And that is to tell me that spirit telling me you need to work on your third eye. You're having issues with your third eye. And then I've had dreams where I've gone to school and completely naked. Everybody has or or gone to work completely naked, and that's a sign of insecurities. There's something going on with your confidence level or your insecurity. I used to have that dream all the time. And sometimes I would have dreams that I would lose my teeth. I would, I couldn't, but my teeth kept falling out. And I don't know, I can't remember. I think I did figure out what that meant, but I can't remember what it was. I think it also had something to do with confidence and insecurity or not being able to speak my truth. So every dream, I feel like, has some symbolic some symbolism or some message to it, even if it is a nightmare. Now, that being said, sometimes it are visits, visits from your loved ones or visit from lower frequencies. But I really believe no matter what the dream is, it's your your higher self trying to tell you something or somebody from the outside realm trying to tell you something. And all at the end of the day, I really think that there's some sort of message to you, some sort of your soul traveling. And that's another thing too, I forgot to mention when, when it's a soul, when your soul's traveling and your soul's learning, then if you're a soul traveler and you work at night and you go to other people's dreams and you connect to other people through their dreams, your dreams are very vivid. They're very colorful. They have a lot of you can see the clear messaging and sometimes you feel really tired when you wake up. So that's kind of the difference. So if I were you, I would really start keeping a dream journal or start like um, having intention before you go to sleep about what, what you're, what you're, that you're going to remember your dreams or that what you're going to dream about or what you're going to do in your dreams. Start really trying to control the dreams. Now, astral travel, a lot of people think that that's a lot different. But again, I think that we're always at that frequency, the astral traveling, the dreams, the meditation, um, even kind of like when you're on plant therapy or you're taking plant medicine, we want, there's that certain realm that, that we that lucid dreaming realm that we're all trying to reach, right? And I think it's because it feels like it's home to us. It feels like that's where we belong because I feel like the spirit world is that. It feels like that. And so it gets kind of scary though when when it when your fears come to play and they turn into nightmares. So, if I were you during meditation or during your dreams and during astral traveling and during um during your lucid dreaming. And to me, I know lucid dreaming and astral traveling are different. I know lucid dreaming is that, but to me, they're the same. So I must either not have an astral travel experience or um, I guess they can be a little bit different because in lucid dreaming, you're dreaming, but you control what you do. You control what you do and you control the outcome. Astral traveling is when you can travel spiritually to other places but to me, they kind of feel the same because you think of a place and you're automatically there during lucid dreaming and astral traveling. And I have never had an experience where my I astral travel and I am connected to a cord. So I don't know if I've just never had an astral travel experience or to, if to me, lucid dreaming and astral travel are kind of the same thing. So lots of things. This is dreams are my favorite. I love them. I always, always had have had crazy dreams. I dream very vividly. I remember them all the time. If you you can't remember your dreams or you don't um, dream at all, then start to to have an intention before you go to bed to start to to ask spirit to bring dreams. 
to you and to um, to bring them to you and to remember them and start to have that intention because you can learn a lot from your dreams. And just remember to, in your dream journal, put down the things that you experienced and the things that you, the, the signs and symbols that you've seen. And I forgot to mention too that this is where you really practice your psychic abilities, all your clairs. You practice them, you, you practice all your clairs, mostly your clairvoyance. But this is where you learn them and this is where you raise them. Um, I love the, the sleeping medium or the sleeping psychic, Ed, Edgar Casey, And he was always told by his spiritual team to sleep. Um, he was studying for an exam. He wasn't getting very good grades. And he, they said, why don't you sleep on it? And he put his pillow, he put his book under his pillow and he remembered, he fell asleep and then remembered everything that was in the book. And he would do readings half asleep and half awake. And I have to admit, I've had some of my most profound downloads in that um, half asleep and half awake time. And I've reached that frequency in meditation and in sleep. So it's, it, to me, it's it's an amazing thing. Now everybody's different, and not everybody's going to feel that. Um, not that's not where everybody's going to get their downloads. But I have to tell you what I've experienced, just like with the the nightmares and the entities that I've experienced with. You know, this is what I experienced with the good part of the dream. So. There you go. Dreams have been a huge, significant part of my life. And so um, if you want to learn more about dreams, I do suggest The Awake Dreamer by Samantha Fay. It's a guide to lucid dreaming, astral travel, and mastering the dreamscape. And I am going to be excited to watch the new dreamscape show that they're making, that they're bringing out. So dreams just are, to me, I really believe that dreams are a frequency that we go to at night and our spirit learns and our spirits um, converse, our spirits process, our spirits, that's where our spirits revitalize, reboot, um, recharge. And that's why sleep's so important. I really believe that, you know, back in the day when there was hustle, 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 I sleep, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I don't believe that's true. I believe a lot of spiritual awakening, a lot of health issues a lot of everything that kind of determines your sleep and your sleep patterns. And so sleep is super important to me. Sleep is something that I believe that we have. Um, I do know back in the day before I kind of was, I knew when I had these gifts, if I would go without sleep for a long time, spirit would be like, in fact, in college, I did not sleep hardly at all. And spirit like is like, fine, we're going to give you mono. And I slept for days, slept for days because spirit's like, if you're not going to rest, we're going to make you rest. And ever since then, every once in a while, if I go without sleep or I don't get enough rest, I'm out for two, for one to two days. I sleep. And so crazy too, Tyler Henry, when I was watching his um, documentary, he did readings for a couple of days and then he slept for two days. He, the readings just... Uh, just make him tired and he sleeps for two days. So sometimes if I get too overwhelmed, spirit will be like, you're out. And I believe it's because one, we revitalize, we rejuvenate, we get our energy back, but our spirit needs that connection. Our spirit needs that connection to the spirit world and the dream world and our ancestors and our spiritual team and our loved ones. And we need that connection to revitalize us. So I really firmly believe that Dreams are a process for us, for our body, for our spirit, for our spiritual awakening, and we need it. There has been studies that if you don't get enough REM or you don't get enough dream sleep, that you can actually start to kind of hallucinate and kind of, you know, have some issues that way too. So my suggestion is keep a journal by your bed, write down your dreams. If you don't dream, start asking spirit to bring dreams to you, bring messages in your sleep. So I hope that that helps you guys. Um, I love it. I'm, it's one of my favorite topics because I really believe that's where a lot of our messages come through. And I just thought it was interesting because I forget until my husband was like, I've had a couple of nightmares the last couple of nights. And I'm like, tell me, it's like, I don't want to tell you about them. They're kind of scary. So I was like, well, let's just sage 
and uh, we saged the house, and he did not have the nightmares anymore. So I thought, you know, this is really something that everybody goes through, kids especially, and um, and I want to talk about it because when we are sleeping, we are we are easy access to some to some entities. So always make sure that you know saging your bedroom is probably a really good idea. Um, sleep with the intention of being protected. Surround yourself with white light or rainbow light. And um, I would suggest rainbow light because that has all the colors that protect and also the filters, the healing and the love, all the different colors and allow access to all all highest good. So when you protect yourself, make sure that you allow the only the highest good can come through and only those with the best intentions can come through. And that's really helped me too. So that's kind of hard because I'm like, okay, is it the CPAP that's helped or is it the, <laughs> is it the intentions that I've started to set? So there you go, guys. Dreaming is awesome. Dreaming in your sleep is the is I think the connection to the spiritual realm, to your higher self, to another another frequency. So I do love you guys so much and I'm so grateful for you and I hope that that helps and I will talk to you guys next time. If you liked this episode of Spunky Spirit, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. 